The chirping of the birds awakened him. For a second, Han thought he was back in his house inside of the academy. After seeing the ceiling of his tent, memories of the previous night returned to him. Han looked down and saw Celestra sleeping soundly. She was likely still exhausted from the pleasurable activities they took part in. Glancing over to the side, Han saw that Brittany was standing next to his bed. She was gently smiling at him, knowing that he had an enjoyable night and rested peacefully. Good morning, Master, she said to him, bowing. Hello, Brittany. Is there anything happening? He asked her, remembering that they were on a trip to some ruins inside of a swamp. The camp is slowly waking up. Earlier, the princess came by requesting to see you. I informed her that you were still resting and was not to be disturbed. She then informed me that departure would occur within the next two hours to provide everyone with enough time to eat some breakfast. Brittany looked pleased with herself for not allowing Ellie to interrupt his rest. You did a wonderful job, as always. I can sleep soundly knowing that you are on top of everything. He complimented her. Brittany's expression brightened from receiving his approval. Han knew that even if people knew that they were appreciated, it still didn't hurt to vocalize the sentiment. Looking over at Celestra, Brittany asked, Did Master enjoy his time with Celestra? You seem to have grown fond of her, he observed. Usually, Brittany would just call another person girl or boy. The fact that she was acknowledging Celestra meant that she had approved of her. Han nodded his head in agreement to her observation. Though I did not plan to engage in such activities, the way she was so sincere with her feelings and how much she improved her core personality, I was moved. I wonder if that is silly for me to say such things, he chuckled. Amused at how childish she was acting, Han wondered if the shackles around his heart had finally been removed. All of us felt the same thing, and did not sense that she was disingenuous with her feelings. For this reason, we slept in the second bedroom and allowed her to approach Master. She explained, confirming Han's suspicions. Though eventually everyone will see. I want you to inform everyone, including those not here, of a new status. I do not believe it will be an issue, but I want you to treat her as you do one another," he informed her. Though the girls may act jealous, Han knew that any jealousy was merely a facade. The way they trusted him and treated him was the main contributing factor for him to get over his ex. These past several months, having them around helped to heal his heart. Getting over his past emotions involved him reminding himself that he deserved to be loved and that he didn't need to compromise when it came for looking for love. Often, whenever people talked about love, they would talk about how compromise was necessary. Things like, you need to meet them halfway, or if you love someone, then it means that you need to be willing to work with them, were things that people often said. As he was mending his heart, finding the little pieces needed to put back together, Han realized that compromise just led to someone having to lower their standards to be inside the relationship. Who would be able to stay in a long-term relationship if it meant that you had to compromise your standards? In the past, People had the help of social stigmas against divorce to help keep them together. But in this modern age, back on Earth, there was no longer the fear of being ostracized. Breaking up wasn't a bad thing, but with how easy it was to find someone else, it was even more imperative to not compromise yourself to be with someone. Even if he was living inside of a fancy world, it didn't mean that compromise should be made in a relationship. The way Celestra came to him, wanting to be inseparable to him, 
meant that it was not a simple feeling. He didn't really understand what made her feel that way, but the fact that her feelings are genuine is what made him do what he did. Looking back at his previous relationships, he understood that they were only seeing him as a means to an end. In Celestra's eyes, he could clearly see that she only saw him for him. Have Queen assign a squadron of Shadow Guards to protect Celestra. Even if her collar protects her, I do not want to test the abilities humans have to destroy something beautiful. Do not have them intervene immediately if they see a situation arise, but have them eliminate the threat with extreme prejudice. I do not care what consequences may occur if it means that my own is protected. The last thing he needed was some individual or organization thinking they can get one up on him. Queen has already assigned several squadrons to watch over her and ensure her safety, Brittany reassured him. Not even an army would be able to prevent Queen's minions from fulfilling their duties. Her grin was vicious with the thought of someone trying to hurt her master. I feel like you are unable to disappoint me, he smiled at Brittany. How is Helania doing with her mission? he asked her. Helania reports that everything is proceeding smoothly. She feels confident that her objective will be fulfilled, Brittany smiled. Are there any issues that have appeared with the city? Han asked. The city is performing as all projections predicted. Reassigning a portion of the staff inside the stronghold helped to properly respond to the increase in citizens looking to relocate. Some people had issues adjusting to the new environment, but most of them were able to adapt with professional assistance. Only a handful was forced to leave the city. All teachers report that students are on track to removing established norms and replacing them with those that Master suggested. Brittany answered, sounding confident about their success. What about breakfast? Upon learning about Master waking up, I had the waitresses bring Master's food to the dining area. At your convenience, the food will be ready for you, she stated. Even if Han decided that he wanted to eat breakfast later, Brittany would make sure that the food was ready to his satisfaction. Let Celestia sleep, and ask her what she wants to eat when she wakes up, he instructed Brittany. As he slowly got out of bed, in an instant, Han was clean and in new clothes. It was the usual dark pants with a white shirt and a dark blue overcoat. He thought that the outfit made him look dashing. Leaving his bedchamber, he saw that everyone was waiting for his arrival. Master, we wish you a good morning, they said to him. Have you all had a good night's rest? he asked them. Yes, Master, they answered. Walking over to the dining table, he sat down in his usual seat. One of the waitresses placed a plate in front of him. There was a large omelette, sausages, and bacon. Using his fork, he broke open the omelette and ate a piece. The inside of it was filled with meats, vegetables, and cheese. He especially enjoyed the quantity of mushrooms inside of the omelette. Making short work of the food, he placed both utensils on the plate to let the waitress know that he was finished with his food. Sipping on an orange smoothie, he was enjoying how this morning was going. Getting up, he walked to the entrance of the tent and opened it. The morning air filled his nostril, which was something he never enjoyed. It reminded him too often of leaving parties in the morning, after sleeping on the couch, floor, or bed. He called this feeling the post-party experience. Celine and Lydia were cooking some kind of breakfast that involved sausages and eggs. There was also a coffee pot brewing quality coffee. Even if a person didn't enjoy coffee, the smell was definitely enjoyable. 
Did you guys have a good night's sleep? He asked the two of them. How good of a night's sleep can one have on an expedition? Selene growled. You look like your usual refreshed self. One of these days, I'm going to learn how you're able to look so cheerful early in the morning. She accused him. Though they knew that Han had powerful summoning skills, they were unaware of how deep his abilities truly extended. As far as they and everyone else knew, he was eating similar food and sleeping on an uncomfortable bed. I guess I'm just a morning person, Han answered cheerfully, laughing at Selene's darkening face. Even Lydia, who was often positive and cheerful, looked a little worn for wear after nights sleeping outside. He thought it was wise to not remind them that for the next month they would be experiencing this kind of morning. <laughs>